Okay. Here we go. Let me go live. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm almost ready. Hello friends, welcome to Artsy Aging, three creative at-home projects. We're still waiting for a few folks to join our, our online event today. Um, while we're waiting, please fill out the survey or the little poll that you see on your screen. Just try, our, uh, our guest today wants to get an idea of who's on the call so she can tailor what she's talking about to meet your needs. So go ahead and fill that out. Good to see you, Christina. Glad you're here today. Hi, Denzel and Florence. Wonderful to have you. Gwen, Joy, great to see you. Linda, good to see you. Lisa Ann, hey, from Fresno, California. Hope it's uh, not too hot out there where you guys are. Sarah from Longview, good to have you with us again today. I think you're really gonna enjoy this one, Sarah. Um, really glad you're here. I'm gonna wait just a few more minutes. We got people calling in here. All right. All right, my friends. I'm gonna end the polling here in a second. Hello, Susan. Thanks for joining us today. Don't worry, you're all on mute, so it's it's okay if you got things going on in the background. We can't see you or hear you, so it's all good. But please feel free to chat with us in the chat box or ask questions in the Q&A. We'd love to get your, your questions in chat or Q&A. And if you would like to ask a question live, just raise your hand. There's a little hand button on the bottom of your screen. Just raise your hand. In fact, we're all going to do that. We're going to practice real quick. I want everybody to raise their hand at the same time. So find the hand on your screen, raise it at the same time. We're going to wait till everybody raises their hand. Then I'll put all your hands down there. Go ahead and raise your hands. I want to see everybody raise their hands. Good, good. Very good. I want to make sure everybody knows how to do that. Awesome. All right. Okay. Denzel and Joy and Susan, we just need to raise your hands real quick. See if you can do that. It should just be a little, little button on your screen that has a hand. Just, just click it and we'll raise it real quick. And then you can unraise your hand. Just go ahead and put your hand down now. Let's go click the hand again and your hands will all go down. So that's how you raise your hand. What that does is if you do have a question you want to speak live, all you got to do is raise your hand. And if it's a good moment that uh, Tina can, can take a question, um, we will, uh, I'll just unmute you for just a second. We won't get your video or anything, just unmute you for just a second so you can ask your question, say what you want to say, and we'll, and we'll keep moving forward. So, all right, I'm going to end the polling just to see who's here today. So can you see that, Tina? We've got some family members, we've got some active living team members, we've got a couple seniors who are looking for ways to stay active at home right now during this quarantine. So um, oh, uh, there a variety of people on the call today. Oh, look at seniors. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that's really great. So let me just quickly start us off. So um, my name is Benjamin. And I'm a social gerontologist. I'm with a direct. I'm with Kelsch Communities as director of people and culture. There's my contact info. Uh, you're welcome to also chat if you if you need it because it's only going to be on the screen for another second or so. But I'm your host today, and would love to introduce our guest in just a moment. Want to thank the Kelsch family for their um, sponsoring this presentation. This is Allison Emmett Kelsch, who back in the 1950s bought one of the very first bought, bought a nursing home basically. They sold everything they had and bought an old fashioned nursing home in Kelso, Washington and moved their family into the basement and began caring for seniors back in the 1950s. Um, they had a brilliant idea in the 1970s and said, oh my gosh, we've got to find a better way for seniors to live that's not in nursing homes, where they have their own apartment, their own privacy, their own space. So they created one of America's very first assisted living communities in Delaware, in uh, Longview, Washington, Delaware Plaza. 
This is the Kelsch family. This is their son, Aaron Kelsch, his, his wife, Judy, and their children. Together, they run Kelsch communities all across the United States. Uh, they're in thir eight, eight states, 32 communities, building seven more, memory care, assisted living and independent living all over the country. In their memory cares, they really work hard to create reminiscing features that are very 3D, very physical, very touchable in all of their memory care communities. Um, and then in their independent living communities, they, they do a lot of very unique amenities like Victory Bistro, which is just an amazing place to hang out with friends. So uh, today we are giving away the caregiver care package. It is a design by a licensed family therapist who creates a care package every month. We're giving away one month of this and it's a package that can come to your home and encourage you as a caregiver, a professional caregiver or a family member who's caring for someone else. She's also created a journal that helps you balance, stay balanced in the midst of what can be a very chaotic life experience. So if you wanna enter that drawing, as well as get any resources that Tina might promise in her talk today, you'll just go to this event at the, you'll go to this link at the end of the event, livingwellevents.org slash insights, and you'll just fill out a bit of information and you'll get an email from Tina with any resources she's got, as well as follow up from our team on the resources that, that we're promising to send you. So um, without further ado, we'd like to introduce Tina Marie Ferguson. She's the executive director of RT Smartsy and Heartsy certified dementia practitioner. She has a very unique career from architecture and designing all kinds of green buildings to expanding just an explosive art business that works with seniors of all different levels of abilities, interests, ages, et cetera, and makes art purposeful, makes it meaningful, makes it something more than just coloring pages and, and going to yet another sip, sip and paint night. She makes it something really meaningful. So without further ado, Tina, take it away. We're so happy to have you on the, on the event today. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Benjamin, for having me today. Um, I will tell you, I've worked with Kolsch for quite a few years down here in Phoenix. And, um, and I've met the Kolsch family and what wonderful people. And I am so blessed to um, be asked to do this today for all of you. Um, this is a, an Italian girl's dream, um, having uh, an having opportunity to just talk to the whole world without being muted. It's wonderful. Or at least if you mute me, I don't know it. Um, as Benjamin said, I am an architect. And about 11 years ago, um, my grandfather suddenly passed away. And this is my grandma and my grandpa. They were the sweetest, most loveliest couple I've ever, ever had the pleasure to be part of. Um, and grandma was a mess. And for a little Italian lady who hugged and kissed everyone she ever met, um, my grandfather's death was devastating. And the only thing that I knew to do was to do art with her. And so I would go to her senior home up in Minnesota is where I'm from. You'll figure that out sooner or later with my accent. Um, and I would sit with her and I would do art. And, and I lied to her at the beginning. I lied to her and I told her grandma, I need to do this for work. Will you help me paint this painting? And she would do it if she knew it was to help me. Um, and slowly but surely, when we did art, she stopped crying and she started living and telling stories and enjoying time and being present in the moment. And it was a miracle. And this was 11 years ago. Um, that community, uh, was called Chandler, uh, was called Chandler Place in Minneapolis. And about a year after I was teaching there, the activity director told the entire group of activity directors in Minnesota that they had an art teacher. And um, all of a sudden one week I had 10 phone calls from 10 communities all wanting to do art in Minnesota. And at the time I owned an architecture firm and I remember saying, how can I, be an architect and be an art teacher at the same time. And my lovely husband, Shane Otmar, looked at me at the time and he said, Tina, 
I've never seen you like I see you when you come home from teaching the seniors. You're filled with love and joy and stories and amazing, amazing things. And, and I never did architecture again. And uh, my sweet little grandma was in my classes for at least two years, I'd say. I have lots of pieces of art around my house that I made with her. And, um, and then my other grandma, Helen, she was in my classes as well for about two years and um, her dementia is what actually led me to all of the training that I have today as a dementia care practitioner. And uh, my other training is being dementia certified, the Montessori method way, which is amazing. Um, working with folks with dementia is absolutely um, the most wonderful thing that I have ever experienced in my whole life. And you all know, it looks like from our poll, um, we had caregivers, we had some family members, and we had seniors as well. So I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about um, the awakenings that I've seen. When I talked to Benjamin and he said I had a half an hour as an Italian, I thought that's about five minutes in an Italian girl life. So I had to really focus on what's the most important thing to talk about? What do I want to say to the world? And I guess what I learned, if I look back on everything, is that art awakens people. And this is one of my lessons. It's a, a wreath lesson. And when I first did this lesson 11 years ago with a little lady named Hallie, it changed my life. What happened was, I love telling this story in person. It's not nearly as fun over the videos. But what I did was um, I was setting up my class and one of the care providers brought this little lady down and she was in a wheelchair. And when I looked at her, she was like this. In her chair. And, I, and the activity directors, they put her against the wall in her wheelchair. And I said, why are you doing that to her? Why are you putting her against the wall? And they said, well, Hallie's been with us for two years and Hallie's nonverbal and she doesn't talk and she doesn't participate in anything that we do, but she loves to be in the room and listen to you all. And I thought that was the most ridiculous thing I had ever heard. And so I grabbed Hallie and I put her up to the table and she was still like this. And I leaned down, I got down low and I came over and I gave her all this fabric. And I said, Hallie, all you have to do is take this fabric and tie it to this metal wire. And Hallie continued to sit there like this. And she didn't breathe, she didn't talk, she didn't hum, she didn't look out from under her hair, nothing. And so I thought maybe the caregivers were right. Maybe I was wrong. And so I left her there with her fabric and her hoop. And I made my way around the table. And about 40 minutes into that class, the activity director suddenly stood up and said, Tina, Tina. And I thought someone got hurt or she needed my help or it was very, it was, it was, um, it wasn't normal that sound that she was making. Tina, Tina, and we looked over and Hallie was done. Every single piece of fabric was tied onto her wreath and she was done. She was the first one done. And all of a sudden I realized that just because someone didn't do something in the past, it doesn't mean that it's not in there. And so, I continued to do art with Hallie for a year. And every month she came and she s sat a little straighter and you could see her face now. She got a haircut and you could see her face and she participated every time and she never talked. About three months in, Hallie came up to me after class and tugged on my apron and she said, Oh, Tina. You have us do the sweetest things. And I was shocked that she was even talking. But then, just like all true seniors, she said, 
but I want to do mine in pink. So for 12 months, I did art with Hallie. She started talking. She started creating. Every time I taught anything, I brought her a version in pink, whether it be St. Patrick's Day, Christmas, whatever it was, I brought it for her in pink. And you guys, I will tell you, if you saw what I saw, if you saw a lady that for two years, they didn't do anything with her to her suddenly making everything and doing everything and her posture was different and her voice came back and her stories and she changed, that lady changed because someone thought to ask her to come to an art class. Imagine what we all can do out there. Um, I hate talking to my screen right now because I love interaction. Um, do any of you have any stories like that or have any of you seen any miracles through art similar to that? Benjamin, can you like, can they, can you see if anyone's raised? Yeah, somebody wants to raise your hand. I'm happy to call on you if you've got a cool story. Yeah. I know we got some stories out there. Oh. Lisa Ann, Lisa okay. Ann you must have a story, Lisa Ann. You must have a story, Lisa Ann. Or Sarah, I'll bet you got a story. Or Tiffany, you must have a story. <laughs> Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot here, poor friends. Well, no, keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. If you've got a story, just chat it in or raise your hand. I'm so a interrupting each other. So if you come up with a story, like let Benjamin know and he can cut me off at any time. Um, so that's Hallie's story. Learning about Hallie um, early on in my career um, doing art with seniors was so beneficial to me because then I suddenly realized that anyone can be an artist, anybody. And I started going into the buildings, especially in the memory care buildings. And I, and I started telling them, bring me the ones that don't do anything. Bring me the ones that you don't think will do it. Bring me them because those are the ones that we need to awaken. And those are the ones that we need to find. And those are the ones that are the miracles in all of this. And honestly, when, when they awaken, it, it just changes your life as a teacher. And, and I'm sure as a caregiver and as a family member. Um, a lot of you are family members and I'm going to um, tell my next story for you. Um, how many of you, uh, Benjamin, did we do a poll that said how many of you regularly participate in um, creative activities once a week? Did we do that poll? Oh, that would be great. I would love to see your answers to that, everybody. Um, I'm just wondering how many of you, and, and, and this doesn't mean you have to be good at it, but how many of you try to do something creative with the person that you are trying to support or on your own on a regular basis. That's gonna kind of cater to me um, just what your abilities are and, and things like that. 10 more seconds. And then I'm gonna show this. Oh, that's so wonderful. So 46% of you say you do art more than once a week. And then it goes down. Either you're once a week or you're a couple of times a month or not very often, about half and half. Very interesting. Okay, that's great. Um, just before I move forward, I don't wanna to forget to tell you guys about this. This. Does this come through right side up, Benjamin, or is it backwards? We can see it perfectly. We can see it perfectly. Wonderful. Okay, so this book was life-changing for me. Um, it's called The Creative Age, Awakening Human Potential in the Second Half of Life. Um, Dr. Jean Cohen was the first person that did research on um, the creative brain and regularly participating in art programming, good art programming, um, on a regular basis. And when you do participate with folks on a regular basis, oh good, I, I'm watching your text. Um, 
how it can change your brain and change your life. So I would, if you're, you guys are active and creating and uh, you would really like that book. Um, so anyway, now that I know that you guys are pretty regularly creative, I'd like to tell you another story. Um, you do, real quick, Lisa Ann had something she wanted to share with us real quick. Great. I'm gonna unmute you, Lisa Ann. Give me just a second here. Lisa Ann, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so back to your art story. We have a resident who lives here currently, and she has a lot of behaviors. And we've never been able to find anything for her to do in activities or anything like that. Um, Lisa, one of our home office active living um, directors, she told me about sensory painting and with beads or clothespins and stuff like that. So we actually got this resident. We put her at a table with a couple other female residents. We put the paint in the bag. We put the bead on there. And I just said, see what comes out of the colors. She sat there for almost two hours and <gasps> did the activity. And it was families are crying. They were just so grateful that we were able to do that. And now she comes to our paint class every Wednesday in our courtyard. Oh, Oh my gosh, that is wonderful. Yeah, we love we love our residents here and we try anything to make them feel welcome. So well, I don't know how many buildings are on this call right now or how many people will eventually um watch this, but I I want to let you know that it, I love that Lisa shared that story because um that comes up a lot. I get the phone call a lot and I would welcome any of your phone calls at any time. If you have a behavior um, and you need to know how to mitigate it through art, I would love um, you to call me and, and for me to give you ideas of how to do that. I think, um, now did her behaviors end up being better, Lisa Marie? Yes, she actually does not lash out anymore, nothing like that. Um, she does have her moments where she's agitated, but she doesn't, it's sure. not as frequent as it was prior where we'd have them every day. She probably gets them maybe like once every two weeks now, and it's, they're very minor compared to the previous ones. Now, do you sit her, do you sit her with so that she can also like share it with other people and, and gain friendship? Yeah, so she sits with a group of our female residents and they actually now call her our paint lady because they think it's so sweet that she sits there and will paint and then she'll even show it to them and they'll start painting and she doesn't talk at all. She kind of talks how your Hallie talks, um, <laughs> but she absolutely loves it and it was like a really big, very big helpful thing for families because they wanted her to interact and that was one thing to keep her here was able to do those paintings. So it was, it was very awesome. She used to be a, um, a grade school teacher. Oh, that is so wonderful. So not only did you stop her behaviors, you gave her something that she's always loved and you took it one step farther to give her a teacher again. So she feels validated. She feels important. She feels like she's helping others. Like you changed her life. Wonderful. Thank you. We we love our resins. We like I said, we try everyone has different little quirks and we try to go towards all those. Absolutely. Well, if I can ever help you, if you ever run across somebody else that you need a little Kickstarter for, feel free to, to reach out. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any more, Benjamin? That's it right now. Go ahead and show us your next project. Cool. So um, a lot of the times when I'm in a building, um, you know, like Megan, what had been with Hallie for two years and thought that Hallie didn't participate. But sometimes family members will bring um, their, their mother or father into my classes and they'll have them sit on the periphery um, at the beginning of a class. And two years ago, I was at a building here. Uh, Hallie was in Minnesota, but I was here in Arizona. And we were doing a silk scarf making class. This is what they end up looking like. And um, 
Sorry, I don't iron. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we were doing a silk scarf making class. And that day I was actually training a brand new teacher. He had never, ever taught seniors before. Um, so he was new. And we were setting up for the class and a, a lovely little um, lady was there with her daughter. And the daughter came up to me and she said, Tina, I've seen your classes and I, I want to be there and I, I want to listen because you guys laugh and you joke and you act silly and you tell history and I just kind of want to be in the presence of you. My mom is on hospice. I really don't plan to have her much longer. She hasn't spoken in six months. She's gone downhill in every aspect of her life. Um, she's not really participating. She's nonverbal. She just kind of was a shell of herself. And we see that a lot. And she said, can I just sit here? And I said, no, but you can bring your mom up to the table and we can do art with her. And the daughter was like, I don't, I don't think you understand. She's not going to do it. And I said, well, we never know unless we try it. So I probably put way too much pressure on my teacher, but you know, I, I encouraged him. And, and so the, the idea is you take this scarf and you tie these little things in it and you give them a Sharpie marker and they color, 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 color. Now, if you can imagine, you can't mess it up. There's no way you can do, I mean, you can do dots, you can do stripes, you can do whatever you want. If you get it all over your hands, it's cool. You just use a little rubbing alcohol, you get it off, it's all good. So anyway, um, the little lady was at the table and Sean, my teacher, was going around and he came over to her and he put the scarf in her hand and he put the marker in the other hand. And then he kind of did hand over hand, which you all know is, you know, you kind of gently hold someone's hand and you direct them to do the project. And uh, so she was doing it and hand over hand. And then Sean finally realized that she was doing it on her own. And so he walked away. So sure enough, here she was doing her scarf, doing her scarf. Every so often she rotated it over and did another one. And the daughter was just in awe. And then all of a sudden she wanted help. And so for the first time in six months, she goes, Sean, and called his name. And this sounds, you know, so many people that aren't in this world don't even see that as a miracle, but it was. And the daughter starts crying and the lady's painting and Sean's like, oh my gosh. And the lady painted and painted and painted and painted. And at the very end, she had this beautiful scarf. Now, the best part of the story was this lady was nonverbal, didn't move, sat in her wheelchair, didn't interact, nothing. Well, we took her scarf away because we do like a, a show and tell at the end of class. And we make sure that everybody loves their work. And we talk about the positives of everybody's piece. And we took her scarf and we put, her on, put it on another table to take a photograph. And that little lady, she got up, she wheeled herself over. She went and took her scarf. She wanted that back. And she even knew which one was hers. She reached way over and grabbed it. And the daughter was losing it. And, you know, we see our family members. We're so close to them sometimes. We're too close to them. I'm this way with my mom and my, my grandparents. And we think we know them. And we think we know what's in them. And, and that daughter had given up on her mom before that class. And after that class, oh my God, it's like she had her mom back just for like 15 minutes, an hour and a half of our class, she had her mom back and it was amazing. So just like Lisa said, you know, um, I, de I developed Artsy Smartsy in a way that every single person, um, we teach a different medium every single month. So sometimes it's silk, sometimes it's paint, sometimes it's jewelry, sometimes it's mosaics. And it's always different because art is different for everyone. And um, this is very typical in a senior community. You'll have a color book and a lot of people just give them a color book and they give them crayons, which is a no-no. And they just tell them to do something. And uh, my next project is how I like to make art purposeful and the other day I was in Minnesota and I, I walked around the corner. My dad was quietly reading and in his book, he had a bookmark just like this. And I had made that bookmark for him 20 years ago and it was old and it was coming apart. It's all faded. 
but it was important to him. And I made that bookmark out of a color book. And so I have a color book uh, class where I have everybody color and then they choose their favorite part and they cut it out and they make a card out of it. And so here's a bunch of different ones. And right now, I know card making is huge right now, now that Hallmark, now that Hallmark's made a ton of money and they're not making cards anymore. Um, you guys can make cards and you have everything. And you can use colored pencils. You can use watercolor pencils. Those tools are amazing. If you don't have them, get some watercolor pencils. They're amazing. You just color like a regular color pencil and then you can turn it into a watercolor painting. Um, and then all you need is a bunch of, car a bunch of paper that are different sizes. So, you know, you take a big piece of paper, you fold it in half, you make it a card, you mount it with this, and then you mount it with your color page and you have this really great card. So, you know, everybody, most people have that in their buildings. Um, I'm noticing that it's 1131. We're supposed to be done at 1130, which doesn't surprise me because I always talk too much. Um, this is another thing that you can make is a bookmark. Um, if you all have to leave, I thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to keep going because I got, I got one more really cool project to show you guys. But if you're leaving now, um, maybe should we put up that last poll to see, um, to see if anyone feels a little bit more comfortable doing art with their people, um, after learning this. And I'm going to keep going. I have about another 10 minutes. If any of you guys want to see this last project, the last project is called Salty Salutations. I'm going to try to, this is one here. And this is one here. That's wonderful. So a lot of you say, 50% um, of you said you feel more confident doing something creative with the person that you're supporting. That's wonderful. Oh God. We're gonna change the world together, folks. 10% um, said you think you do. And 40% say a little bit, but you wanna learn more. Um, my website is www.artsysmartsyclass.com. Um, I would love to hear from all of you. I just made some custom color pages yesterday. And I have 15 of them um, that I can email you. And you can just, you can print them out on your computer um, and color forever. And they're really fun. Some of them are easier than others, depending on what the abilities are of your people that you're taking care of. But um, please reach out to me. I know Benjamin said that there is, um, there you go. Benjamin said that there is going to be something that he's sending to you. Benjamin, maybe could you jump in on this part on how they could reach me if they want more information? Are you sending something to them or with the, the, the sheet that I made up yesterday? Yeah, so if you go to this um, address, put in your email, then Tina will be able to send you what she's gonna talk about in a moment, the 15 pages you were talking about, the coloring pages that you've developed. Um, as well as all her contact information, links to her YouTube videos and Facebook videos, that kind of thing. So feel free to go there and that way she can follow up with you with all that information. Awesome, that'd be really great. Should I do my last one or has everyone left us? Are oh, they no, no, we still have 16 people on the call, so go ahead. Oh, good, oh my gosh, good. Okay, so this is my last one. I gotta make this bigger, okay. Um, so this is my last lesson. Isn't this one cool? Um, this is done with glue and salt. That's it. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you. I kind of did this step by step be beforehand so you can see it. But all you need is a bottle of glue, any kind, school glue. And go into your kitchen and steal the salt. You shouldn't be eating salt anyway. So this is a great way to use it. So I'm not sure, this part is hard to see, but there we go. So the first thing you do is get a nice, good piece of, uh, of paper. I use watercolor paper. You guys probably don't have watercolor paper, but use like a thick cardstock or if you can order watercolor paper on Amazon, it would be awesome. 
Um, and you wanna just design a design with glue. And while it's still wet, you gotta have a bucket. I have all these buckets filled with stuff. Use like a big bucket, you know, and put the painting in the bottom of the bucket and sprinkle the salt over it. And salt is gonna go everywhere. Just pour it on, like the more the better. And then go in and shake it off and just go whoop really fast. You gotta do it fast, otherwise the glue gets everywhere. And then you're gonna have this. You, you gotta let it dry for like a day. So you're gonna have this salty, thick line. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your watercolor paint. And you can get that at the dollar store too. Um, and you're going to just go in and one area at a time, you're gonna add color. So I did my reds first. Here I added the polka dots next. And then after that, I went in and I did the background with a little bit lighter paint. And then at the very, very end, I added green. And then just like those um, color book cards I was showing you, all you gotta do is get some colored card stock and get a nice big piece, fold it in half, mount it on here, take the one you just made, frame it on there. And then I always add like a little piece of ribbon because I think it's cute. Or I'll add, um, glitter glue this stuff is really great and you can get it you got most of you know this but um little things of glitter glue you can get them at the dollar store if you want to um i order mine where you can get tons of different colors so that's fun um and then i just use a glue stick to glue all the paper together um you know there's only over a hundred types of glues and most of the phone calls i get from my um activity people are care providers are what glue should I use for what product? It's really important. So for this particular thing, paper on paper, use a regular glue stick. Um, and then you have these beautiful cards and all you used was your glue and your salt. Um, the only negative is that you have to wait 24 hours to actually paint it. So um, you could get your people together, the person you're caring for, make a whole bunch of these one day and you know, make 20 of them and then let them dry and then you have them all ready to, to paint at a later time. So just kind of break it up into, into parts. Um, and then um, that's about the last lesson I have to share with you. On my website, I have dozens and dozens and dozens of art kits that I sell, um, including the fabric wreath class. Um, the fabric wreath is another thing that you can do at home. Um, I just cut up everything. You can cut up towels, sheets, curtains, clothing, jeans. I make a really good 4th of July wreath by cutting up blue jeans and then using like red bandana or like a red colored shirt or something and then white. Um, adding tulle, this is called tulle, this light stuff, um, really makes your wreath pop. So that's a great thing. Um, I have these kits where the fabric's already cut up. So if you want to get by kits, you can do that. But otherwise, if you're at home and you just want to cut, 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 you know, put at least seven or eight different types of fabric in each of your wreaths because it makes it look really pretty. And then I don't know, you can put an ornament in the center. You can put anything you want in the center um, before you hang it. And then I just put a suction cup on my window and then you can hang it by a suction cup or you can hang it on a door or, um, you know, however you want to do it. But fabric wreath making is really, really easy at home because we all have so many things. We're always recycling fabric wise, um, especially right now. We're all cleaning out our drawers and that's a great way to use fabric. Um, does anyone out there have any questions, Benjamin? I could talk forever, but I know you guys have to like work or something. <laughs> well, I do. I'm curious. So the metal, do you just take like a piece of straight metal and bend it or do you have to buy those specifically thank you thank you thank you i skipped that part you're gonna love the answer did you guys see that movie mommy dearest some of you are too young to know that movie you shouldn't have wire hangers in your closet they're bad for your clothes but they're good for art 
So cut up your wire hanger, cut the, the hooky part off your wire hanger, get some duct tape, turn it into a circle, overlap it. And then I don't know if you can see it, but you just duct tape that on there on both sides and then make your wreath as big or as small as you want. Um, I like it at least this big. That's got to be maybe 10 inches or something um, so that you just really have enough space for the fabric. So good question, Benjamin. Thank you. Yeah. And then the scarf, what were you tying into the scarf? Like what uh, was that? You can tie anything. Um, you'll never find what I use, but sometimes uh, I've had people use poker chips. Those are good. Um, I recycle everything. So I have things that you don't have. Um, but yeah, you can put poker chips in there. It has to be something that's plastic. That's not going to soak up the paint. So make sure it's something that's plastic or, I mean, maybe even wood would work, but don't use like cardboard or anything like that. Gotcha. And then you just tie it with a rubber band. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, it's just a rubber band. And then, um, you know, all of those, I have a kit. If you like this, this is one of my, um, most favorite lessons. And we sell these in kits at 10. And they have 10 scarves, they have all the knobbies, they have all the rubber bands, they have all the directions, it has everything you need to make 10 silk scarves. Do you know that I have ladies from 10 years ago, I still teach the same people, and they still have their silk scarves on their walkers. They just are so proud of them. No so way. No way. They have them on their walkers or on their little baskets or on their purse. I call them an accessory scarf because they're tiny. But my little grandma... Let's see. Oh, see, she has one on here. My little grandma always wore a little teeny silk scarf right here. So that's why I started doing those scarves. That is so cool. Well, Tina, your energy is infectious. I hate doing art, but after this class, I'm like, I'm ready to do something. I got to get home to my kids and <laughs> try some of this stuff. So that's thank you. That's wonderful. I love seeing that poll that you all are more, um, feel more confident to do art with the people around you. If you do, you will change lives. So don't worry about being the best at it. Don't worry about if you're an artist or not an artist, just try something creative and watch the miracles happen because they will, I promise you. Beautiful. Hey, thank you so much, Tina. We'll get everybody who goes to livingwellevents.org slash insights. Your, your, um, you said it was a free downloadable coloring book for adults. Is that correct? Absolutely. It's, I'm just going to send you a PDF and it has 15 pages of color pages and you can just print them out on your, on your printer. Wonderful. Well, hey, thank you to everyone who has joined our event today and thank you especially to Tina. We appreciate you and we'll see you online, Tina. Thank you, Benjamin. Bless you all. Bye-bye.